All right, so this is just going to be a quick little video about some tips, tricks, and mods for the Sony HDR CX405 Handycam video camera. Um, let's talk about uh, one of the first things I did here. First thing I did was I wanted to be able to attach filters to the front of my camera. Okay, by the way, this is just a UV filter. I use it as just as a protection. I have other filters like polarizers that I use and uh, ND filters. But um, this camera, it's got a manual switch on it for opening and closing the uh, lens cover, as you can see here. I didn't want to have to fool with that all the time. I wanted to just leave it open and then have a clear UV protective filter on the front. That's one reason why I did that. And um, another reason is that, let, let's say for example, if you are by the ocean and you get some nasty saltwater sea spray on your lenses, uh, if you spend any time around water and you're doing video or photography, you're gonna get uh, spray on your lenses. But you can, just take this off and clean it and, and reinstall it on there instead of having to deal with your little lens way up in here. Um, you know, the more you rub on this lens, the more chance you have for uh, abrading it and scuffing it up. So I'd rather do a cheap filter that I spent a few dollars for rather than the lens here. Um, let's talk about how I'm attaching these because uh, that's probably what you're wondering. This is simply a step up ring and it's a step up from 48 millimeters to 49 millimeters. That's the one that I found was probably the best fit to then take some two-part epoxy. And uh, I think I used Gorilla Glue epoxy. And then I, I, I fastened it on there and then I let it sit overnight. Um, so there's that. And by the way, you know, you can leave the, uh, the lens cover switch open all the time. I may even put a little drop of epoxy up in here just to keep it open so I don't have to fool with it. Okay, so we'll get that back on. Uh, as you can see on the little lanyard mount that they have on this camera, this little silver mount, I've got a wrist lanyard and my lens cover. Now that I've got my... Uh, my uh, step-up ring that holds the filter on here. I like to keep a lens cover on that. This is just a generic lens cover for what size did I say? 49 millimeter filters. You can buy these Amazon, eBay, wherever you like. And here's a wrist lanyard that I always use. Let me tuck this little USB cord in here. Okay, so if you're out and about and you don't want to lose your your video camera. I like a big thick lanyard because it uh, spreads out the weight. Not that this is a heavy camera, but it makes it more comfortable. So now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tethered with a lanyard and I've got my little cup here. And you've got a very secure way of, uh, back up a little bit, very secure way of uh, going around with your little handy cam. Okay, so that's the lanyard and lens cap cover that we've covered here. Let's see. Next we'll go for the uh, cold shoe. Now this camera does not come with any provision to, uh, to mount anything like a light or a microphone on it. It's got an internal uh, microphone in the front, which I put a little bit of fuzzy wuzzy on there to block the wind and a little speaker right here. But I wanted to be able to put a light since these cameras with very small sensors don't do too well in low light. And let's say for example, let me grab a light. We've got this one. Okay, I'll just grab one of these off of my Osmo Action here. 
For example, you could use a small light like this if you're going to be doing some selfie work. You just mount that right on there and lock the lock the ring down. So you've got a nice little set up there with the light. Again, let me back off. Okay. Or if you need a little more light, I've got this little larger one also from Ulanzi. And uh, let's move the move the locking ring. And uh, you got a little more light now. Okay. Now, if you're going to do a little light setup, I would suggest that you get a light that has the little locking ring that I'm spinning here. Most do, but I've seen some that don't. Like the GoPro Mod Light doesn't have any kind of locking mechanism on it. And I just, I can't understand the thinkology behind that, especially since it goes on an action camera. But anyway, I always get them with a locking ring. And if you're going to get a little cold shoe, I don't think you're going to be able to see it well in here, but there's a little metal leaf spring in here and it's on both sides. And that also puts pressure against the foot here. So you've got that holding it snug and then the locking ring. So your security for the light is twofold, which I, I really like. So if you're going to shop for a cold shoe, make sure you get one that's got the little leaf spring on the inside that puts pressure upward on the foot. And not just something that just slides in with no, no means of security. Now, <clears throat> I happen to fasten this uh, cold shoe on with uh, JB Weld, two-part JB Weld. Uh, I think I sanded some of the cold shoe off on the bottom, if I'm not mistaken. This one has, is a plastic cold shoe. You've got some that are metal, but the housing is plastic on this camera, so I don't really see the point in buying a metal one for this particular job. A little inexpensive plastic one that's got the little leaf spring on both sides should do fine. You just want to make sure you mount it straight. And then this way, that it's straight and not sitting up like that or that, before you let it dry overnight. Okay, so there's the cold shoe mount. And the last uh, modification, there are some other videos on this. So I'm just going to go over this quickly. If you notice, uh, well, when you get this camera, it's got a space for one battery. But if you'll notice, I've got two in here. And I've got a little piece of a scrubbing pad in between so they don't rattle back and forth. Um, this is the spot where your, your, your battery will normally go. And this is a little extra storage. If you see, it's got like a little area on the back that looks like an external battery, but it's not. In fact, what, what it is, is it had this little plug inside of here a little placeholder and you can see that it, it, it looks just like the shape of a battery so obviously there was some intent at some point for this shell maybe on another model to hold a battery but anyway um, so this is the original battery and I removed this there's a little screw right here on the right hand side of the camera it's right there you need a very small Phillips screwdriver you're going to loosen that and then uh, this little shell pops off here. There's other videos on this, like I said. And then this piece is going to be installed in there. Goes in just like this. Okay, but when you see it from exposed, there's two little, little teeth here that once it's installed, you know, they're pushed up and they're locking it in. So you'll want to push down on those, preferably simultaneously, and then slide this out. So here's your little plastic placeholder, which I don't really need. I only saved it for demonstration purposes today. And these batteries, the arrow will always go to the right, just like the little placeholder shows. And there's going to be a little bit of movement. So I put the little small piece of scrubbing pad in there just to keep it. That's something else moving my lens cap. 
but it'll hold it snug. So anyway, we'll close that back up. And now you've got two batteries. Um, one battery lasts a pretty long time, but there's a backup in there now, and that's very convenient. And by the way, you can charge this camera by way of this, and there's an extension uh, for this USB that they provide you. So anyway, that is the tips, tricks, and mods for this camera, the Sony HDR CX405. And these things should help you get the most use possible out of your camera. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching.